This is my goal, the max cape. With the clock always ticking, I want to do it in the shortest gameplay time possible, as an Iron Man. Because I chose to be an Iron Man, this helmet next to my name prevents me from trading anybody or using the Grand Exchange, so I have to get all the items myself. Since pathing is essential on an Iron Man, a lot of theory crafting and planning goes into this max cape run, and thankfully we have a great guide to follow. Last episode, we were getting ready to do Song of the Elves, and we're not your average player who's doing this quest just so they can camp CG for 2 months and then complain about going dry. We want that sweet 40k agility XP reward. 92 agility unlocks us the final 4 of Sepulchre, and that is where all of our money is going to be made. Being a little over halfway between 91 and 92, the remaining XP is going to all come from these quests, and Song of the Elves is the first one we're going to complete. So you may be thinking, JCW, I know you're a beast, but how will you do all of these Grandmaster quests with such low combat stats? Don't worry, I have that covered. Thankfully, the Song of the Elves final boss should be relatively easy with Mage, so let's jump into that and get it out of the way real quick. Right before the final boss, I remember struggling with protecting the fort on my first speedrun account, and the reason was because I was tagging with Blood Barrage. For this fight, you want to tag the enemy so that they are not attacking the barrier, because if the barrier's health in the top left goes to zero, you lose. Logically, we want to use an AoE attack, but when Blood Barrage hits a zero, the NPC does not switch from the fort to you. So to be prepared, we brought Grey Chins. These have an AoE attack, and even when they hit a zero, the enemies still switch to you, so we should be chilling. Alright, maybe not as laid back as I thought, because this was actually kind of close, but we did it on our first try. I kind of forgot I don't have time to log out and read up on the wiki, and Twitch chat says it's a pretty easy boss, so we should be able to do this with no problem. The first mechanic I need to be aware of is to just quickly switch to prey range when he pushes me back. This seems pretty simple. Until he talks, and he throws something at me, so I turn on prey range, and then I choke hard. Yeah, this was way too close. That doesn't matter though, he never stood a chance. Now, I'm going to bank, and we're going to enter the final boss. The Saren fight is way easier than I ever could have imagined. I'm doing a method called the P-Neck method, where I use Phoenix necklaces. This boss is pretty straightforward, but she does have one mechanic which will deal a hit on you, all the way up to your maximum hit points minus one. So if I'm 80 hit points, the special attack will hit up to a 79. However, the P-Necks have a way around that. A Phoenix necklace automatically heals your HP once you drop below 20%. Not only that, but if there were any pending attacks, the necklace knows it, making me immune. Her attack is extremely long, so whenever she talks like an anime character and says she's about to use it, I eat a poison dynamite to damage myself under 20%, and then the P-neck activates to heal me, plus know her attack. Look how easy that was. Alright, just a few minutes later and we're kind of chilling on supplies. I might have brought a little too many prey pots, but there we go. 40,000 agility XP has been earned. For the next step, we're going to need higher combat stats before doing the rest of the quest. Most of them are going to be requiring high range, and there's a few steps we need to do in order to range efficiently. We need 69 Slayer to enter Monkey Madness 2 tunnels for chinning. However, before training Slayer, we need Divine Strength Pots. And while we're chinning, we're going to want to be using Divine Range Potions. If you don't know what a divine potion is, you add a crystal dust to a potion and it makes it divine. The divine version of a potion never goes down. You stay the maximum level boost for 5 minutes and then it all degrades at once. In order to get crystal dust, we're going to be doing 2 tick woodcutting for crystal shards. I was really excited for this woodcutting session, so I may have forgotten a few things. First of all, no lumberjack outfit, which gives a 2.5% woodcutting XP boost. However, we don't want to leave because we have two friends helping us with our raids. That's right, since forestry, every person on a tree up to 10 people gives an invisible plus one woodcutting boost per person. So I grabbed a couple friends with alts and they are all AFKing the same tree that I am on with the bronze axe, giving me an invisible plus 10 levels. Not only that, but there's also now consistent timers on the trees and when they go down, and I never have to move from this spot, whereas the most challenging part of 2 tick used to be moving to a third tree, now it's all very easy. So now just kick back and enjoy the rates of 78 plus 10 woodcutting. Guys, we messed up. The rate looks great, right? 156k an hour and we're only level 79? 
Well, there's a small problem for this read. You see, I was in voice chat, and we had this little guy pop up in our minimap, the Crystal Imp. I kept calling it because I knew someone wanted it, but I didn't want to ruin my bunnies that were set up for 2-tick, and they kept saying it wasn't there. They thought I was trolling, I thought they were trolling, but look, if they're gonna troll me, I'll just pick it up myself, fine by me. Look at that boys, 6 power amulets, basically 0 time loss. I would definitely call that a win. This was all fun and games, until someone jokingly said to imagine if I was in the wrong world this entire time. And ha ha ha, it was a pretty good joke. Until I realized, yeah, it was real. Alright, but hear me out guys, now that there's people here, you can surely see how I couldn't tell the difference if there was other accounts here or not, right? I mean, I'm so hyper-focused on this method. Of course, don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying it. And yeah, let's move on. Before our next session, we want to be prepared. So I made my way to Temple Trekking to quickly grab the Lumberjack outfit, which took me about 45 minutes. Next, we need 300 oak and 300 willow logs to use a log basket. And this basket is a new item from Forestry, it will hold up to 28 logs. This will be very good since we're an Iron Man and we have to get our own planks. So I figured why not grab it now and we can bring it on future teak trips to bank an extra 28 logs, zero time. Here it is, the log basket. Now that woodcutting is fully prepped, let's get back to what we originally needed. I have all of these other potions I need to make, so I figured I could telegrab some wines to make raging pots along with everything else. Ranging potions are not worth making for herb XP, so we're just grabbing enough wines for 99 range, and then we're never going to touch another dwarf weed until we're maxed. Look at all of these potions. I know you guys might not believe me, but I didn't trade any other players or buy these potions. I made them all myself because I'm an Iron Man. I'm going to turn them all into 4 dose, and then we'll really be gaming. While doing all of this, we're making sure to stay on top of our daily bone meal that we get from Mauritania Hard Diary, so that we can fully charge our bone crusher for when we need it. This daily is going to be very useful in the future. Alright, one more thing to prepare, and then we start Slayer, I promise. We need to make Slayer bracelets, which come from red topaz and opals. These bracelets will have a 25% chance to either speed up a doo-doo task, or 25% chance to extend a good task. Bracelets? Check. Divine Strength Potions? Check. Subscribe to JCW on YouTube? Check. Let's go slay. Let me tell you guys something about Iron Man Slayer. We're not grinding to 99 yet, but we know the basics. These are our goals for Slayer. First, we need as much combat XP as possible. Ideally, finishing 99 melees plus magic at 99 Slayer would be perfect. Second, Slayer on an Iron Man is not training Slayer. Slayer on an Iron Man is training every other skill. Melees, prayer, herb lore, literally anything that isn't Slayer. The GP made from the drops are also quite important because Slayer is one of the very few skills that actually make us GP. And third, the Arceus spellbook is very good for melee slayer. I mentioned how good Thralls was in episode 9 where we did green dragons, and that continues with slayer and will continue to do so until 99. Right now, with low level slayer, it's pretty casual. There's nothing we can do that's crazy efficient or inefficient, and there's no super good tasks because just about everything is average. Getting low Slayer XP like we are right now in exchange for melee and herb XP is fine. And on the other hand, even though barrage tasks are way faster Slayer XP, they're not super important because I'm still missing out on all of that sweet melee and herb XP. I just hit level 68 Slayer, and yeah, this grind was a lot faster than I ever could have imagined. I guess to be fair, I was only really doing like 200k XP, so it's not like it should have been long. RCA Spellbook still doing its work with Unsold Heads, getting us some zero time prayer XP. And man, look at that, 100k an hour strength and I'm only just hitting level 80. That is crazy good. Alright, so I did some thinking and here's the plan. 69 Slayer's requirement for Monkey Madness 2, sure, that was our goal from the beginning. But when we return to Slayer later, the first thing we're going to want to do is a fire cape. So I'm going to unlock Tazars now, and once we get a Jad task, we'll pause Slayer until we come back in the future. 
Cave horrors are a no for me, Neve. Try again. Ooh, dust devils. This one should be juicy. And the juice delivers. Good GP here, good Slayer XP with mage, and even superiors. So I killed the superior, and for some reason it forgot to drop me an imbued heart. Maybe next time? Not sure. One dust devil left, and yes, that final dust devil kill got me 69 Slayer. Now we just need a Jad task, then we can move on to Monkey Madness 2. Trolls? Uh, not the greatest, but I think I can try these out. I heard these may be decent just south of Raids 1, so I tried this location out. And yeah, in case you guys were wondering, I'll save you the time. Trolls suck. Abby Spectres? Alright, I mean it's not a great task, but it's not worth the skip. So you know what, we're 69 Slayer, let's just move on to whatever is next. That way we don't accidentally get 99 Slayer this episode while trying to get one to Zar task. Just as a reminder, these were the quests we had to complete in the beginning of the episode. Song of the Elves is now done, and Fremenic Exiles requires melee instead of range, so we are quickly going to knock that out of the way. The remaining quests all require higher range to complete, so we will finish those up after we spend a day throwing our chinchampas that we got ourselves. Quickly starting Monkey Madness 2 until I can reach the tunnels, which takes about 10 minutes. Then we are going to see massive gains. To get to the chinning spot, each player has to take their own unique path through the tunnels. The first trip is about discovery. You try every path until something works. After that, you just memorize the path you took and all future trips will be smooth. Because it's my first trip, I'm going to play it safe and only bring my gray, red, and 1000 black chinchampas. These will get me through the early range levels, and it gives my inventory a lot of room for prayer pots and food should something go wrong. We need to be very careful not to die here. Tinchampas are lost on death, and since we can't just buy them back, if we were to die and lose all the chins, it's essentially a restart account scenario. If you don't know what's going on here, there's essentially 73 monkeys in this room. I have Entity Hider on, but there are two accounts following each other right in front of me, because the way to stack the monkeys on one tile is to move on and off the tile you want them to go on. And if two accounts are following each other, or dancing as most people would call it, they will infinitely stack on that one tile. And just like that, we're back on dead man mode. We're essentially getting 10 times XP rates because we're legit getting 390k an hour with red chins and we're only level 65 range. I forgot to show you guys how cracked my gear was, but here it is. We got the swag boots of whiteness and the green and red dehyde body and chaps. The fact we're able to get these rates with this gear is just insane to me. So at 65 range, I still have 1000 black chins to throw. But with my current setup, that's boring. You guys saw me AFKing the last minute and just throwing chins and nothing else. What's to say, let's make this more interesting. This time around, we brought 7000 black chins, so hopefully we'll do a longer trip. Take a look at the melee gear in our inventory. Not using special attack is a waste of potential XP. So, we brought a Dragon Halberd and we're going to spec every time we're back at 90 or 100%. The Dragon Halberd spec takes 30% and it hits up to 10 enemies in one square at once. With there being 73 monkeys in this room, I'm sure you can imagine that the melee XP from this is definitely going to pay off. 700? 700? and an 800 XP drop. So we got a free 2.2k strength XP just for doing an idle 3 hits with spec. We're gonna be here for a lot of hours, so this might actually add up really well. A full hour later, we're closing in on 75 range, and these were the XP rates we were seeing. 578k range, 29k melee, and 18k prayer. I way underestimated the prayer XP from here, 18k an hour from my bone crusher automatically burying the bones for 8 xp each is just crazy to me. The melee xp looks good, but honestly, we could do better. With the help of a friend, we realized we were doing this method all wrong. Let's go to the bank and fix it. Death Charge. This spell is insanely good for iron memes. You guys may have saw me casting it during Slayer earlier in this video, but what does it actually do? 
Death Charge can be cast once every 60 seconds, and when you use it, the next kill you get will restore your special attack by 15%. Essentially, this is going to give me a full extra special attack every 2 minutes. To put that into perspective, this will give me nearly 2 times more specs an hour, so our melee XP is going to zoom up. Here's my first level of a 0x skill, 72 prayer. Just a couple hours later, we're already 85 ranged. We changed our Dragon Halberd to train on Shared, so if we're getting 15k attack, it also means we're getting 15k defense and strength XP, so about 45k melee XP per hour. There's a logical reason on why we decided to switch our Halberd to Shared instead of Strength. We're currently 94 combat, but here's the thing. 100 combat has big unlocks. We could do Duradel for Slayer, Karamja, and Western Prov Hard Diary. There's just a lot of good things happening at 100 combat. If we spread our combat XP across all melees instead of just strength, getting 100 before we finish range is very realistic. Level 90 ranged. 74 prayer. And then 81 strength and with that comes 99 combat. Just one more to go, and we can probably get out of here. Level 96 range, nice. Here's 75 attack as well. And oh my god, we did it. Ending at 96 range, with 2.6k black chins remaining, we hit 73 defense and 100 combat. 96 range should be high enough to quest, so we're actually going to stop now and come back after 99 hunter for the rest. One of the diary requirements for western provinces is to kill Zora, and thankfully since it's been 3 weeks since my last iron episode, I had some time to practice Zora on one of my alts, so I quickly sent 34.9k kills and then I made my way to do it on my iron man. It's good to bring mage and range for Zora, so hopefully when we do use our crystal bow, our 96 range will carry us. This was just a little closer than I could have imagined, I had no food, and I could have been one hit by the blue Zora if he hits me with the range attack. But no worries, we're chilling. I finished up the rest of Hard Western Prov, and this time we're actually going to start using our lamps on runecrafting. This got us level 62. I have never done Secrets of the North on any accounts in my lifetime, so this is my first time ever doing this quest. I could have done it on my alt first for practice, but that would mean I have to spend an extra 30 minutes questing. And let's be real, I'd rather lose 30 minutes on this account than spend an extra 30 minutes questing on another one for no other reason. The first boss fight was easy for me, I melee him and had no problems. The final boss fight is what we were really nervous about. But hey, we spent 10 hours leveling 65 to 96 range, and we watched Slater music kill this boss. We were ready. Guys, I thought this was going good, but it's not looking good. We have 30 HP and no food. Oh my god, we have 11 HP and no food. Never mind, we're good. That was easy. That's the first high range quest complete, and 60k agility XP closer to 4-5 Sepulchre. I haven't done Dragon Slayer 2 in probably 4 years, but it's time to run it back. My only memory of this quest is Galvec, and even that wasn't that hard. It might be important to note that I did do this quest at max combat on all of my other alts. So yes, with our limited game knowledge, we very much so underestimated the first boss, Robert the Strong. Or should I say, Robert the Tank. This guy has 97 granite plate bodies on his body, and I literally cannot hit him. I learned after how important it is to use a crush weapon against him. But eh, I mean that's not much for our next speedrun. At least on this one, I had to get more brews and tank the heck out of him, but we just barely got it. For the final boss, Galvik, we have our trusty adamant crossbow and ruby bolts. The ruby bolts have a chance to hit a 100, so as long as they keep doing their job, I'm just going to stomp all over this moron. And with 4 brews remaining, that's yet another quest out of the way and 50,000 agility XP closer to Sepulchre. The next quest up was the easiest one, Beneath Cursed Sands. This quest was still fresh in my memory since I had to do it 6 months ago on my other speedrun account, and I remember the second boss, this champion thing, being the hardest. 
but this time we were well prepared. I gotta say, this crystal bow is definitely growing on me. I barely used any food against this guy. Of course, no problems on the final boss of this quest either. With him dead, I get another 50k agility XP closer to level 92. Now, there's just one quest remaining. Next, Monkey Madness 2 final boss is mostly just DPS with the crystal bow. Nothing too special here, just a trusty crystal bow doing its job. And finally, we can go back to Sepulchre. We now have every quest complete besides Desert Treasure 2, and that does not give us agility XP, so it can wait until we finally need to make use of our quest cape. It feels so good to be back. Here's the last 1k agility XP I needed for 92, and now we can just send this floor all the way up to floor 5. Floor 5 is our first gold mine we hit in the account. There are 4 places to loot, and they are all going to make us bank. The first one is in this portal, which got us a room plate body, which is already 38k GP. Next, the grapple, which got us an adamant two hand. Nothing great, but I mean we're an Iron Man, so 4k GP is 4k GP. The third thing we're gonna loot is the absolute best one there is, the bridge near the end. This coffin gives us two rolls on the loot table instead of one. So here, we got both runite bolts and soul runes. This is pretty juiced up if you ask me. And finally, the Grand Chest. This can give us the Ring of Endurance at a 1 in 200 drop rate. However, the ring is only good if you have Staminas, and since we're an Iron Man, we don't have those. While we do 99 agility, there's a couple rules of multi-skilling we have to follow. First, we need to alk as often as possible for the magic XP. The Runelite Bolts we're alking comes as drops from the chest, so we'll never have to worry about running low. Secondly, the maple logs we're cutting for arrow shafts, which we then use on feathers to make headless arrows, needs to be done before 99 agility. This means that not only do we need to cut all the maple logs, but we also need to attach the feathers to make 1.1 million headless arrows by the time we finish 99 agility. Sounds easy enough, right? Here's 94 agility. Not long after 94 agility, we learned something massive to help our XP rates. Look how clean the floor looks. There's a lot less detail on it, so our eyes are naturally able to focus on the traps and obstacles a bit easier. But low detail isn't exactly what makes it easier. Everybody familiar with Sepulchre already knows about that. However, I was told by a friend that there's a way to hide the yellow and blue tiles, which is arguably the hardest part of Sepulchre. A yellow tile moves you backwards a few ticks, whereas a blue tile would push you forward. There are certain points where most of the floor is blue and yellow tiles, and you have to be careful not to step on the active yellow ones while dodging darts. When we hid all of the lighting, it made it infinitely easier to dodge the yellows and jump on the blues. But how exactly do we hide everything to make it look so clean? There's a plugin called the Ground Object Hider from the Plugin Hub. You'll want that, and another one called Object Markers. First, you'll want to go through every single floor, and manually right-click and mark object on the blue tiles. I recommend changing the color to blue so that you don't forget that this is indeed a blue tile. Then, once this is done, you turn on Ground Object Hider, and you type in the ID for blue and yellow tiles, 38447 and 38448. These were the kind of rates we were able to hit in long sessions after we added this plugin. Well over 90k an hour since we haven't even gotten our big XP drop from 4 or 5 in this clip, and a solid 5k an hour construction and 7k thieving from looting 4, 4, and 5 as well. These will get us more than a couple passive levels to 99 agility, and here's level 95. 70 fletching. 96 Agility, level 98 Agility, and with this comes some great news. We are finally all caught up on our Feathers and Headless Arrows. We just bought some Broad Arrowheads. This is where the Fletching Gains get real. Instead of the usual 15 XP drops, we now get 150 XP drops. Finally, 99 Fletching is about to pick up. One final fat session for 99 agility. A casual 6 hours of maintaining over 90k? No big deal. The broads got us to level 82 fletching, 
and from looting, we're chilling at 79 thieving and 73 construction. You guys haven't even seen the loot yet, but just from these levels, 99 agility was well worth it. And you know what? I won't even get level 99 at the end of a 4. I'm gonna build this bridge, loot the coffin, and cross over again. There's 99 agility. This is our final loot from every coffin all the way to 99 agility. We got two rings, but we forgot to show them since they don't do anything for our account. The runes can all be sold to this shop, which is what I'm doing with the wall runes right now. However, we're going to save the soul and blood runes for a bit, just in case we find a use for them. The blood runes will be used for barrage, but I'm unsure how many soul runes I'm going to use, so I'd rather play it safe. The 466 Renner seeds were slightly better than doing Master Farmers, and I'm really excited to use these for Slayer in the far future. I mean, yeah, just look at the rest. There's just no reason any Iron Man should ever touch a rooftop when you miss out on loot like this. I did mention I was going to make a guide for Sepulchre after 99. However, Hebox made a very good in-depth guide, which I'll put as a link in the description if you wish to give this a shot. Now that we're 99 agility and made about 30 mil coins from everything in the screenshot, it's time for a gains recap. On the left are my stats from last episode, the middle is my current stats, and the right are the massive gains that deserve a like on the video. We have been hyping up Sepulchre for a long time now, and the gains showed to be well worth it. Let's also not forget the range gains we got from completing all quests besides Desert Treasure 2. We're now at 717 hours played and 590 EHP. Assuming we plan on finishing around 1800 hours, we're just about 40% of the way. I would consider this pacing pretty well. This is a great point to end the episode, so as always, TY for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, peace out everybody.